and everybody, we welcome you to worship today. We invite you to sing the worship with us. Church. Wonderful to be here and worship on this glorious June day. Uh, it is just a, a blessing that we can continue to worship uh, both here and now. And for some of you are going to be worshiping with us later um, using this live stream. And so we are glad that you are coming to grow in faith with us at Grace. Um, for those that are visiting for the very first time, we welcome you and want to introduce ourselves. I'm Janet Salver, I'm one of the pastors here. And my name is Drew Colby, and I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm happy to welcome you as well. At some point today, we want to invite you to use our Connect card so that you can register your attendance here. It's online. There should be a link anywhere near where you're watching and worshiping with us. And that'll be a way for us to know that you are here. Also a way to make an offering if you'd like to do that or share your joys or concerns. And today, it might be a way to uh, send a message to Pastor Janet. Uh, this is our last Sunday in our series called Here's the Thing. And it's a series designed to help us savor our last Sundays with Pastor Janet as a pastor here. So today is that last one. Uh, but we say it's our last Sunday with her as a pastor here. Uh, we know that uh, in time, we'll be able to be together again. And, uh, but most of all, we're just thankful for your ministry here. And uh, we look forward to worshiping with you today. And so I invite you to take a breath with me, <laughs> right? Um, that is one of the ways that we are able to attend to the life-giving presence of God in our lives. And so we pause to take a breath 
and lift up this prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, it is your loving presence that makes all the difference in our lives, that Christ lives and dwells among us all, at all times and in all places. Open us to recognize you in this worship through your word, your people, and your creation. You are a God beyond all pra praising, ever working to restore and renew our lives. And it's in the power of your spirit that we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. So let us sing together, O oh God, beyond all praising. continues now with the reading of scripture. Today's reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter and the 12th verse. Listen for the word of the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
let us lift up our prayer to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for drawing us together, gathering us in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we open our hearts to receive a word from you today. And may all that is said and all that is reflected in our hearts be acceptable, be praiseworthy of your gift of love to us. Amen. So, we are going to reflect on walking in the way of Christ today. Did you know that the average pair of feet take 7,000 to 8,000 steps a day, about two and a half million steps a year? That means in a lifetime, we walk approximately 115,000 miles. And for some of you who are hikers and runners, it's probably far more than that. So here's the thing. Walking in faith is not measured in miles. The evidence of our faith is found in this verse from Romans. And I invite you to repeat with me, rejoice in hope, be patient in trouble, and pray at all times. This was my beloved husband Paul's favorite verse. And it just seems right to talk about him today. I would not be who I am. I would not have the faith that I have were it not for the way God infused our marriage with love, forgiveness, kindness, mercy, strength, and joy. When I first answered a call to ministry, I made it clear that my call was a call of our marriage. It was a response to the blessings that we had experienced as a family with our four sons. Rejoice in hope, be patient in trouble, and pray at all times. Was and still is a good verse for raising children. Paul told me that when I began in ministry, he was clear that God had laid it on his heart that his role was to support me, to be part of every church we served. And so he was. Sunday school, running soundboards, singing in the choir, offering his services and mission, anything he could do to help extend the gospel beyond the church walls. He was always trying out new microphones, saying, Janet, they need to be able to hear the gospel. Well, my last semester in seminary, I took a course on the book of Exodus with Dr. Bruce Birch. And our final project was to create something that would demonstrate what we had learned about the Exodus faith, about the journey with God that shaped and formed the community of believers. And so I decided to create a stole, and Paul jumped right in to help. Yeah, believe it or not, he had already uh, embroidered, he had, he had experience working with fabric, he had embroidered the um, arm of one of my sleeves with vines and grapes one year. So I'm wearing this stole today, and I would like to describe for you how it illuminates rejoicing in hope, being patient in trouble, and praying at all times. In the second chapter of Exodus, it says that God heard the cries of the Hebrew slaves. They were crying out for help, it says. God heard their cries remember the covenant made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and was concerned about them. So God called and introduced himself to an unlikely leader, Moses. 
he called him and sent him to deliver God's people. This blue and green, blue and gold V-shaped fabric that is on your screens. It's up, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Represents the deliverance of the Israelites through the Red Sea. You can see that down at the bottom. This is laying on our baptismal font because this story reminds us of the parting of the waters at the very beginning in creation as God separates the water and God delivers the Israelites through the Red Sea, God brings forth a community. Talk about hope. This was and is the hope of the oppressed. And deliverance through the water happens through our baptism. The water separates and we are brought into relationship with the community of faith, shaped and formed by the word of God. Now, faith is active. Faith is a journey, one step at a time, through every wilderness, on every mountaintop. This next slide reveals the story of the Exodus wilderness when the people were miraculously delivered, shaped and formed by their wilderness experience. This was a time of testing and a time of hearing God, of knowing and seeing God. See the squiggly lines on the purple fabric in this image? They line the entire edge of the stole representing each member's journey of faith, crossing over and intersecting with others over and over again. This portion of the stole it represents the manna and the quail. It was designed cut out by Paul and sewn with gold thread by his hands. Remember, manna was the thing that was called, what is this? Manna was given by God. It was the bread from heaven, unlike anything they ever had. It, was, it, was, it fell into the wilderness every single night to sustain God's people. And it lasted only one day. And each day you could collect only what you needed. And if you collected more, it was a sour, stinky mess. The manna and quail became boring and old school after only a few days. The community was shaped and formed like this for 40 years, literally forced to rely on God's provisions and nothing else. Further, they were granted a gift. God gave them the Sabbath because on the sixth day they could collect enough manna to last them two days. Now, this 40 years in the wilderness, one might understand that Sabbath was something that they grew to fully rely and trust in God to provide. That Sabbath, this day of rest, was as important as the other six days of collecting manna. God accomplished God's purposes in that wilderness, shaping and forming God's people. The Israelites were guided through the wilderness and beyond the wilderness by clouds of God's presence. And here they are represented, they're around my neck, they are represented by purplish blue spirals. These spirals are the turning point in our faith journey. Spirals suggest 
that our journey turns toward God. And repentance is that word that means a turning toward God. New life comes into the world through turning to God. Spirals indicate that turning. Last week, Drew shared that I had taught the theology of childbirth as he and Allie were expecting their firstborn. And it goes like this. The way new life comes into the world occurs because the female uterus, the womb, unlike any other muscles anywhere in the human body, is made up of spiral-shaped muscle fibers. They contract and relax every few minutes in order that new life is delivered into the world. Yes, they rest in order for new life to arrive. The community of faith, then, was born, formed into God's royal priesthood, a chosen people, a holy nation, as they turned and focused their daily dependence on God. The six days of regular daily bread and rest on the seventh. But there are eight spirals around my neck, eight spirals that represent the turning point, eight representing the eighth day of creation, which is the Christ the fulfillment of God's loving presence in the person of Jesus Christ. The chalice and paten adorned with the cross, that's the cup and the plate that you see in that image, become the real presence of Christ amongst us. Jesus' life and his ministry, his death and resurrection are remembered and reenacted through the celebration of the Lord's Supper. The broken body of Christ invites us to enter, bringing our brokenness into Christ and made whole through the body. So we walk in the way of Jesus. We are shaped and formed through leading cross-shaped lives, uniting our offering of ourselves in union with Christ's offering for us. Where the faith community began with being nurtured by manna and quail, the faith community is now sustained by the grace of the body and blood of Christ offered through the cross and made real through the living word of God. The community is gathered, a shared community. As you can see, the children that make up the community in that image, we are all children of God. And they gather and are formed into a community by this meal that is initiated by the new covenant given to us through Christ. And we are all invited into eternal life indicated by this blue trinity knot. Now, eternal life is something that we can enter into now. We don't wait for eternal life to happen after our death. Eternal life is how we are called to live with God and with one another now. Thanks be to God. I give thanks this day for all that um, the ministry that Paul offered was joined with the ministry that I was able to offer. I give thanks for uh, Standing here with you today, I, t- I have a heart full of gratitude. I cannot thank, be thankful enough to God for placing me uh, in the midst of God's people to be one of those who could stand to share the word and to serve alongside the hands and the feet of incredible, loving people. 
It's been a mystery to me to be able to serve in, in ministry. It wasn't anything I ever expected that I would do. And it's been a mystery um, that through all that I've been able to offer in ministry, God has provided me with amazing people, colleagues that I dearly love and respect, and members of each and every congregation I served that illuminated even more of Christ's love for me. So I'm just entirely grateful for all that God has been able to accomplish. And I know that now as I enter into a new chapter, um, it, it's a little bit like it was when I entered into ministry. I, I'm entering a future that is unknown, um, but it is there that I know that God will continue to provide all that is needed for me to be nurtured and sustained. And I do look forward to a day when I can uh, come back and worship with you. Um, and I invite each of you to uh, welcome and remember uh, that when there is a need, Jessica is your new pastor and she will offer you uh, just a wonderful presence and new and meaningful gifts for each of your journeys as God's spirit has led her here. And so I end with um, just a prayer that God be with each of you until we meet again. Amen. Our worship continues now with the time that we call Living Thanks, and uh, today we're going to spend that time um, thanking God for many, many blessings, but among them especially today, we thank God for Pastor Janet's ministry among us. Uh, and we've got a slideshow to enjoy that honors her ministry, not just here, but, uh, but th throughout her pastoral career uh, as a way of um, enjoying again uh, what this has meant for us, but also raising it all to God you know, as an offering of thanksgiving. So let us live out our thanks together now.
God is faithful, has been faithful, and will be faithful. This is the, the promise of the gospel, uh, and uh, Pastor Janet, your ministry is evidence of it. So thank you, and thanks be to God. Our worship continues now with a time of prayer on behalf of the church and the world. When you use your Connect card, that's one way for you to share your joys and concerns. You can also comment uh, wherever you're worshiping with us today. You can comment in the comment section with any prayers that you want us to lift up. Uh, on our prayer list, uh, we want to include, uh, as a church, Donna, Sandra, and Barb, who are all recovering from surgery. We remember members of our church and community that are living with and fighting cancer. And we heard this week that uh, our sister in Christ, Louisa, her father passed away in Bolivia. And so as she travels to be with family and celebrate his life, we, we ask your prayers and ask God's help uh, in a time of grief. Lifting those and those that we carry on our hearts to God, let us pray for the church and the world. Almighty God, faithful in so many ways with us on the way as we walk by faith. We, your people, pray to you on behalf of the church and the world. We pray for your church throughout the world that we may be faithful to the call that you've given to us, responding to your grace in every way. We pray for your children throughout the world, those within your church and beyond it, we pray for the leaders of the world, that they may act in justice and peace. We pray for the earth as your own creation and for our use of it. We pray for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, our families and extended families, our neighbors, and those whose work sustains our life, like first responders and grocery clerks, mail carriers and trash employees. As a community, we pray for our community. We ask that you comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, those on our prayer list and those that we carry in our hearts or name now before you. We ask for courage and hope and joy through your salvation. We commend to your mercy all who have died for Louisa's father, and especially today, Paul Salbert. We pray for the day that we may share with them and all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Finally, we pray for Pastor Janet, our sister in Christ, whose mothering grace of this community will continue to impact us in our walk of faith. We pray for her in her retirement, for days of deep joy and sustaining and healing rest. And we pray for the ways in which you will continue to use her as a minister by virtue of her baptism. We thank you for her life in the midst of our lives and for your resurrection power, which makes it all possible. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is a joy to be appointed to a church named Grace because so much of what we do uh, revolves around this good news of God's grace in Jesus Christ. And the, the doctrine of the church, that grace alone is what saves us and sustains us. And that is the name of our closing hymn, one of Pastor Janet's. I invite you to sing with us, Grace Alone.
We are truly thankful that you were able to worship with us today. If this was your first Sunday with us, we especially want to say welcome to you. We're glad that you found your way to grace, and we hope that today was a blessing. A reminder to fill out your Connect card. That's a way for us to learn your name and for you to offer your joys and concerns. Also a way for you to make an offering online. And this Sunday, again, in the feedback or comment section, it might be a way for you to offer a word of thanks to Pastor Janet or a word that might bless her as she begins her retirement. We know that you'll want to know about other ways to remain engaged with grace in the days ahead, and here are a few of those. This week, we have our first in-person senior adult luncheon in over a year, uh, to this Thursday at 12 o'clock noon in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, we ask that you register no later than tomorrow. There's a link in our weekly email from last week, or you can visit the website and search senior adult luncheon, uh, but we're excited to welcome folks back. I think the last time they did it was uh, St. Patrick's Day of 2020, and so uh, we're excited to be able to offer that and have some time of fellowship. Uh, also, uh, there's still time if you want to come by today or tomorrow to sign Pastor Janet's memory book. This is a way for us to bless her in the year ahead. Uh, and also, we wanted to make sure that you know that starting this Sunday, our 11 o'clock service is a mask optional service for in-person worshipers. We will continue to offer the online service, but we want to make sure that you know that 11 o'clock in-person worship is now mask optional. Finally, we want to invite you back next Sunday as we start a new sermon series called The Next Big Thing. And our guest preacher next Sunday is going to be Pastor Rudy, who was the senior pastor here, here uh, eight, for 18 years before I got to become, become a part of the ministry of the church. And so we invite you back next Sunday to enjoy that. Uh, the last thing I'll say is another word of thanks to Pastor Janet for your ministry to me and to the church. Uh, I look forward to uh, being your friend uh, and your colleague in retirement, but, but mostly your friend. Uh, now, uh, uh, her partnership to me has been a profound blessing, and I know I'm not the only one. So um, we honor your ministry and are thankful for it. I give thanks for every opportunity we've had to serve together every opportunity that I have had with each of you to journey along in faith, to walk in the way of Christ. And so receive this benediction.
We go nowhere by accident. Wherever we go, God has sent us. Wherever we are, God has placed us there. Christ, who lives within us, has something to accomplish through us. So let us believe this and go in his grace and his love and power. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My fear doesn't stay.